Welcome to the Northern Light Webcasting Network. We bring you Western Wisconsin sports via the internet. Stick around and get to know us. Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School presents Viking Pregame. A look at today's Colfax Viking Girls game. And now, Viking Pregame. Good evening and welcome to Colfax High School, where tonight the Vikings coming off a dominating 64-47 victory over the Bloomer Blackhawks will take on the Elk Mound Mounders. Rick Olson here and soon I'll be joined by Dan Petchow as we're getting ready to bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Coming up in this edition of Viking Pregame, we'll take a look at tonight's matchup between the Elk Mound Mounders and the Colfax Vikings. Then we'll get Coach Doucette's perspective on tonight's game in Coach's Corner. Following that, we'll bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game. So get ready to listen to some exciting high school girls basketball. All that coming up right after this brief timeout. You're listening to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Rick Olson back here at Colfax High School where Dan Petschow and I are getting ready to bring you all the action of tonight's girls basketball game between the 2-0 Elk Mound Mounders and the 2-1 Colfax Vikings. Now, Prior to Thanksgiving break on Tuesday, November 26th, the Vikings continued to play solid basketball as they dominated the Bloomer Blackhawks by a score of 64-47. to the Vikings were led in scoring in that game by Camry Meredith, and she went 12 for 16 from the floor and 7 for 7 from the charity stripe for a total of 31 points. She was followed in scoring by Rachel Charlotte, who had 15. The Vikings used their tough inside game to pull away to the victory. The Vikings need to focus those strengths into the Dun St. Croix competition, as tonight's game is the conference opener for both teams. The Elk Mound Mounders opened their season on Thursday, November 21st with a close 52-46 victory over the Fall Creek Crickets. Then last Monday, the Mounders took on Baldwin-Woodville where they were victorious by a score of 46-37. Leading the way for the Mounders this season is senior shooting guard Sophie Cedarblade with 21 points on the season. She is followed by freshman shooting guard Tori Blaskowski with 15 points senior shooting guard Haley Blaskowski with 11, and senior center Taya Schaefer with 10. Last season, the Mounders ended their season with a 16-win, 7-loss record before losing to Gail Ettrick Trempolo in the WIAA Regional Finals. This year, the Mounders carry a young roster with only three seniors and zero juniors. The Vikings are looking to repeat their strong performance and experience of the first three games, and both teams are looking to get their Dun St. Croix schedules off on the right foot, and we'll have all the action for you right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. But first, following this time out, we'll get the coach's perspective as we chat with Viking head coach Joe Doucette on Coach's Corner. You're listening to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Sweet strawberry icing. You're in goodwill and just past that vintage denim jacket you spot. Miniature donut earrings. You lean in. Ah, oh, that's the scent of shopping success. Because at goodwill, every item you buy funds local job training and more. So bring home those donut earrings and bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Time now to see what the coaches have to say. It's Coach's Corner, what they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. And now, Coach's Corner. 
Today we're talking with Viking girls head coach Joe Doucette. And coach, we're getting ready for the Vikings to tip off their Dun St. Croix Conference against the Elk Mound Mounders. And your girls are coming off a pretty impressive 64-47 to victory over the Bloomer Blackhawks. But that was nine days ago, which is a long time for a basketball team to go without a game. Are you concerned about any holiday sluggishness going into this game? Yeah, I think so, Rick. There's always there's always that fear, and, and a lot of kids had a lot of time off, and, and sometimes that's good, but I think early in the year, but I think, you know, we're a veteran crew, and, and uh, we know it's at stake, and, you know, a great program, a great coach in Jordan, um, you know, so I, I, I think we'll get great leadership and be fine, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely a concern. Now, the Mounders are coming into this game with a 2-0 record after defeating Fall Creek and Baldwin-Woodville. What can you tell us about the Mounders and what special challenges do they present? Oh, man, that's them are two good teams. You know, Fall Creek and Baldwin-Woodville are both good, and, and uh, you know, they, they, it starts with their point guard. You know, a uh, very experienced point guard with that Haley Blaskowski, who I, th I just respect. She plays hard all the time, and, you know, they got one of the best shooters in the area. Um, you know, she won that three-point contest down at the state tournament, and, and uh, you know, and, and they got a good supporting cast. So we'll have to, you know, play as well as we did against Bloomer, and, and uh, maybe even better to uh, to come out on top. Now the Mounders are pretty young, with only three seniors on their roster and and no juniors. But uh, you've mentioned a number of times the Vikings have a lot of experience. Do you expect that possibly to be the difference maker tonight? Well, boy, I hope so, Rick. I, you know our kids have been around. They've been in some battles. They've been in the sectional finals twice, and we've been competing for the conference title. So we played in some big games, and and I think the Camry Meredith and the Rachels and the Jana Bovies and Josie and Morgan are all, uh, you know, very battle tested. So I hope they uh, relax and set the tone and uh, you know, like I said, we'll have to do a good job on that Blaskowski and we'll have to do a good job on that, that Cedar Blade girl who is a great shooter and uh, you know, um, and we need to play smart. So which Colfax girls are you expecting to step up and really make a difference tonight? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all about team. We're all about, uh, every, you know, everybody. And I, I think everybody's going to be ready. So, you know, we're going to try to play hard and, and uh, you know, and, and you know, use a lot of kids and, and really try to get after them. Well, Coach Doucette, good luck on tonight's game, and hopefully uh, you'll get that Dun St. Croix conference off on the right foot. I hope so, too. Thanks, Rick. You've been listening to Coach's Corner, where they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Did you know that some vaccines prevent cancer? I'm Dr. Bill Schaffner of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases, and I want to talk to you about a vaccine that protects against the most common cause of liver cancer, the hepatitis B vaccine. Hepatitis B virus can stay silent in the body for decades before symptoms develop. Many adults need vaccination, including those up to age 59 with diabetes. To learn more, visit adultvaccination.org. That's adultvaccination.org. You've been listening to Viking Pregame with a look at today's Colfax Viking Girls game. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Stay tuned. Coming up next is live Colfax Viking basketball. Hi, I'm Amanda Pete. Like all new parents, my husband and I want what's best for our baby. When it was time for our daughter's immunizations, we wanted the facts. So we carefully researched vaccines. We spoke with doctors and other experts and asked some tough questions. We decided the vaccines were the best thing for our child. I urge you to get the facts. Learn the facts about vaccines so you can make the best health care decisions for your family. Thank you. A message from the American Academy of Pediatrics and vaccinateyourbaby.org. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of a stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for their age and size. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. First, I hold my hands out like they're on a steering wheel. Then I look over my shoulder. One. Okay, cool guy. Two. Three times. Next. Oh, I put it in reverse. Meep, meep, meep. Then I take it up and down. Up, up, and down. And that, kiddos, is called the forklift. Dance like a dad. It's a great way to make a moment with your kids. Now that's dancing. 
Sure beats flossing. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Colfax Viking Basketball is on the air. The Northern Light Webcasting Network, in conjunction with Colfax High School, proudly presents today's Girls Colfax Viking game. Join us as the 2019-2020 Vikings strive for success in the Dunn St. Boy Conference. And now, back out for coverage of today's Girls Colfax Vikings game. <laughs> Well, if that doesn't welcome you to Colfax High School, I don't know what would. Rick Olson here along with Dan Petchow, and we're just moments away from tipping off the conference opener in the Dunn St. Croix Conference between the Colfax Vikings and the Elk Mound Mounders. And Dan, why don't you tell us who's playing in this game? Yeah, this could be a good matchup tonight. Here's the starters for Colfax. Number 10, Martin Schleissner. Number 12, Jana Bovey. Number 14, Cameron Meredith. Number 22, Josie Stanky. And number 44, Rachel Charlo. Elk Mountain starters are number 23, Tori Blaska. Blaskowski. 31, Haley Blaskowski. 33, Olivia Schreiber. 41, Sophie Cedarblade. And 43, Taya Schaefer. Yeah, they made that Blaskowski name tough enough for you but, to say. They gave it to you twice. Yeah, that's right. Right in a row. <laughs> well, you know, we've, we've had to... Uh, double up on first names for the Vikings and I guess we'll have to do that for the uh, for the Mounders as well and now we have the guys choir again or uh, for the national anthem Clear with our national anthem, and we are just moments away from tip off between the Vikings and the Mounders. And with that, we're going to take a real brief time out as they're about to do the starting lineups down on the floor. But Dan already did that for us. So you're listening to Viking Basketball in Northern Light. Webcasting Network. Check names off your holiday gift giving list. Dairy State Bank encourages you to go local. When you support locally owned and operated businesses, every dollar you spend returns threefold to your local economy, putting your hard earned money to work in the community you call home. So this holiday season, consider gifting locally crafted goods or an experience at a local eatery, craft beverage maker, or a performance with family and friends. Dairy State Bank, banking on relationships. Member FDIC. In addition to being your hometown newspaper, the Colfax Messenger is also your one-stop shop for all your printing needs. The Messenger provides full in-house design and full-color printing services for copies, business cards, letterheads, envelopes, pamphlets, brochures, books. They can even do posters up to 13 by 30 inches for your events or benefits. Call the Colfax Messenger at 715-265-4646 or visit dewittmedia.com. Oh no. 
If your car has had an oh no experience, whether it's from a deer, another vehicle, or any other cause, be sure to see the hardworking people at Morgan's Auto Body in Colfax. Mike Morgan and his staff are ready to get your car right again. The staff at Morgan's Auto Body are ASE and iCar certified technicians, and they can get your car looking like new. That's Morgan's Auto Body in Colfax. Call them at 715-962-3559. And we're back at Colfax High School where we're just about to tip things off. The Elk Mound starters are out on the floor and here come the Viking starters. A couple of Blaskowskis, a Schreiber, a Cedar Blade, and a Schaefer out there for Elk Mound. And for the Vikings we have a Schleisner, Bowie, or Bowie, Ma uh, Meredith, Steinke, and Charlo. Charlo jumping center, she tips it over uh, to Schleisner, who brings it across the timeline. Vikings moving from left to right. Out high to Charlotte, tries to feed it down into the lane. The pass is intercepted by the Mounders, and they quickly come back up the floor. Blaskowski, that's Haley. Gets it over to the right side. Back out to Haley. To Cedar Blade, tries to take it into the lane. Ball gets knocked away. Haley picks it up. Gets it over to her sister Tori, back out high to Haley, and back over to Tori on the right side. Tori drives down, tries to get to the lane, and the ball is, well, her pocket was picked that time by Meredith. Schleisner with it at the top of the key. Over to the right side, back out to the top of the key to Bovey. To Meredith on the left side. To Schleisner on the left, cross-court pass to Bovey. As they feed it into the lane and a little bit of traffic there. Charlo tried to get it back out and uh, an errant pass and it's gonna go over to the Mounders. Tough defense on both ends right now. Cedar Blade inbounded. Gets it into Schaefer. Back to Cedar Blade. Cedar Blade over to Tori to Haley. Uh, down low to Tori, brings it out high again. Out to Cedar Blades, over to the right side now to Haley. Haley drives the lane, puts it up in a whistle and foul. The foul is on Schleisner. It's her first personal, first team foul. First foul of any type in this game. Mounders inbound it, and it's Haley with it out high. They swing it around to the right side, and it's Torrey with it. Feeds it down low, shot goes up and out. The shot was by Schaefer, and the rebound taken down by Meredith for the Vikings. Gives it over to Schleisner, passes across the timeline, and she gets it back, drives down the lane, puts it up and in. Morgan Schleisner. The little one in the land of the Giants. Yes, yeah, found a little seam there in the paint. Vikings putting on some full court pressure and the Mounders bring it across. Schreiber with it. Over to Schaefer, long shot goes up and in and that's a three pointer for Taya Schaefer. And the Mounders go on top by a score of three to two. Schleisner with it. Over to Bovey. To Meredith, this is all on the left side, and the ball gets knocked away from Charlo quickly down the floor, driving the length up and no good. That was Haley with it, and the Vikings come right back down. Meredith gets it back out to Schleisner, puts up a three off the iron, no good. Meredith with the rebound, turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound taken down by... Well, it's out to Bovey. A lot of traffic under there. Josie Steinke is the one who came out with that rebound. Steinke now has it between the circles. Bovey on the left. She comes out high. Over to Charlo on the left. Feeds it down into the lane and back out to Steinke and, or to Bovey and the shot comes up a little bit short and goes out of bounds and the Mounders have it. Three to two Mounders on top of the Vikings. 14.52 to go in the first half. Haley with it. She gets it over to Tori. They're both Blaskowski, so we'll just go with the first names. 
Oh, back over to Haley. She takes it over to the right side. Out high to Cedar Blade. Over to Schaefer, or Schreiber, I'm sorry. And then over to Tori as she drives the lane. Whistle and foul. And I believe it's going to be on, yes, falls on Jaina Bovey. First personal on Jaina, second foul on the Vikings. Inbounding the pass is Haley Laskowski. And the ball comes out high to Schreiber. Schreiber back over to Haley. Haley takes it down the right side, kicks it back out high. Shot goes up, no good. That was Schaefer with the shot. And the rebound taken down by Meredith, and she comes across the timeline, gives it over to Schleisner. Schleisner to Stanky, out to Bovey. She's got it at the top of the key. Drives the lane, puts it up and in. Jana Bovey puts the Vikings back on top, four to three. Tough shot by Bovey there. In a lot of traffic that time. All right, Mounders have it in the forecourt now. Laskowski, that's Tori. Gets it over to Haley on the left side. Haley takes it out to the free throw line, loses the handle on the ball, gets knocked away. Schleisner picks it up, takes it down the lane, and the ball gets knocked out of bounds, and the Vikings will have it. A lot of the crowd thought that should have been a call, uh, foul called, but evidently they got all ball, and it went out of bounds. Yeah, good st steal by Colfax, and uh, but good... Uh, Defense by Elk Mound to get back. Yeah, some good recovery speed there. Ovi inbounds it to uh, Maddie Barstead, who's into the lineup. Taylor Irwin is also in. Addie Olson is in. Addie has it between the circles. Gets it over to Irwin. Irwin drives to the free throw line, tries to get it back out to Charlotte, and we have a whistle and. Foul being called against Charlo. They kind of got tangled up going for a loose ball. That's Charlo's first personal third team foul against the Vikings. Quickly down the floor, Torrey with it, drives into the lane, puts it up, and no good. Rebound chased down by Meredith, and... Mounders... Tried to knock it off of Meredith as they were going out of bounds and didn't quite make contact and Vikings get the ball. They bring it down the floor. Addy with it through the center circle at the top of the key. Still has her dribble going. Feeds it off to the right side to Barstead. Back out high to Meredith. To Irwin on the left. Irwin to Charlotte. To Barstead. And back over to Irwin. And Irwin gets called for a travel. And so the ball goes over to Elk Mound. And it's Haley with it, bringing it down the court. Haley Blaskowski. She takes it over to the right side, drives all the way down herself and does not make the shot. Charlo with the rebound, gets it to Eddie, comes across the center circle. Takes it down into the lane, kicks it out to Irwin. Irwin puts up a three and hits it. Taylor Irwin with a three-pointer, and the Vikings go up 7-3 to three with 12.04 remaining in the first half. Good job, Eddie Olsen, to uh, get the kick out there, and uh, Irwin is wide open. Back down the floor, and ball gets contested, and Blaskowski comes up with it. Feeds it back out to her sister, Tori. Back over to Haley, back to Tori. Tori on the right side. Torrey swings it around, it's back over to Haley, on the left. Cedar Blade with it, long shot, no good. Rebound chased down by Charlo. Addie Olsen with it, she's got a trailer right behind her looking to steal it, but she changes direction and gets it over to Charlo. To Barstead, to Irwin, Irwin drives the baseline, puts reverse layup up and in. Taylor Irwin with a really nice reverse layup, and that's five points for Taylor Irwin, nine to three, Vikings on top. Coming down is Cedar Blade for the Mounders. It's out high to, to Haley. Now Torrey has it on the right side. Back out to Schaefer, out high. 
Driving the lane is Torrey, and the shot goes up by Schaefer. Torrey fed it off to Schaefer, and the shot went up, and we have a foul on Addy Olson, I do believe. Yes, fouls on Addy, first personal. Fourth team foul on the Vikings. And at the line is Taya Schaefer. She'll be shooting two. First one's on its way. Rolls around and in. Nine to five. Check that, nine to four. Second shot. On its way and nothing but net that time. Now it's nine to five. There's that Dolly Parton song again. Yeah. I've heard that song before. <laughs> Vikings come down the floor. Addie Olson with it. Leads it over to the right side to Charlo. Charlo looking down for Meredith. Meredith puts the shot up, gets hammered, but no foul called and the ball gets rebounded by the Mounders. Quickly down the floor comes Laskowski, that's Torrey. Feeds it over to Emery, who's in the game now. Back to Torrey. To Hollister. To Emery. Back out to Schaefer. Schaefer to Haley as she is driving the baseline, and they're going to call her for an offensive foul. Yeah, it was, it was either going to be offensive foul or her foot was on the line, too. So that's her first, and first team foul. Although the scoreboard doesn't have it, but he sure gave the indication that it was an offensive foul. Yep, yep. Charlo with it, gets it out to uh, Maddie, and the shot is up and no good. Rebound taken down by the Mounders. Give to Blaskowski, that's Tory. Over to Haley, out to the top of the key to Schaefer, and she puts a three-pointer through. Vikings on top, nine to eight now with 9.34 remaining in the first half. Meredith with a short three-pointer, and it's no good. Came off just the front edge of the iron, and the Mounders have it coming back down, looking to take the lead. Torrey with it. Gets it to Hollister, to Haley. Kicks it back out to Schaefer. Schaefer to Emery. Emery back down low to Torrey. Back out to Emery. Oh, check that. That was Hollister, and the shot is good. And that was a three-pointer as well. So the Mounders are up by two, 11-9. Barstead with it on the right side for the Vikings. Gets it out between the circles to Irwin. Feeds it over to Addy. On the left to Charlo at the free throw line, puts it up and in. A wall knotted up at 11. Rachel Charlo with the 15 foot jump shot. Vikings putting on some full court pressure now. They put a trap on, but the Mounders get it across fairly easily. Hollister with it. Over to Torrey. Feeds it over to Haley. Haley back over to Torrey on the left side. Gets it back out to Schaefer. Schaefer to Haley on the right side now. Free throw line extended to the right. She takes it to the free throw line at the top of the key. Feeds it to Torrey. Pass out to Haley. Haley with a jumper, puts it up no good. We have a whistle and a foul. And the foul is on Charlo. That'll be her second, fifth personal against the Vikings. And Haley's first shot is no good. Quite a few substitutions for the Vikings. Schleissner back in. Wilson is in. And Addison Olson is in now. Haley's second shot is on its way, bounces it off. Irwin gets the rebound, gets it over to Schleissner, brings it down the floor. Gets it over to Meredith on the right side. 
Meredith drives into the lane, puts a jumper up, no good. Rebound taken down by the Mounders. We have a whistle and a foul, and that's on Seville Wilson. She put some close pressure on Schreiber. And into the lineup for Elk Mound, uh, back into the lineup is Hollister. They inbound the ball. Emery brings it down. Gets it over to Torrey. Over wide to Schreiber. And then back to Torrey on the right side. Leads it down low to Schreiber. Schreiber out high. And gets it over to Emery. Ball is stolen by Meredith. Meredith takes it down the length of the floor, puts it up, no good off the glass, and a whistle and a foul. I believe the foul is going to be on Schreiber. That's her first personal. That should be the second team, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, second team. Unless they changed that call on that one that was out of bounds. First shot by Meredith is up and in. Vikings back on top, 12 to 11. Meredith's second shot is on its way, and it's good. 13 to 11, 7.04 to go in the first half. Laskowski, Tory type, brings it across the, the timeline. Feeds it over to Schaefer, or Schreiber. Puts the shot up, no good. Wilson with the rebound. Schleissner with it for the Vikings as she comes across the timeline, stops at the top of the key. Feeds it over to Addison on the left. Addison looking for somewhere to go. Gets it to Meredith underneath. Puts the shot up and whistle and a foul. She overlaid the shot a little bit, but uh, she gets to go to the charity stripe. Good aggressive move to the hole and drew the foul. That falls on Shriver. It's her second. Second team foul. Camry's first shot is in. And her second shot is just like the first one. Nothing but net. 15 to 11, the Vikings on top by four. And the Mounders quickly down the floor. Shriver with it. Or check that that was uh, Blaskowski Torrey. Now she has it on the right side. Gets it out high. And then over to the left side to Haley Blaskowski. Back over to Torrey on the right. To Schreiber. Schreiber out to Haley. Over to Torrey. Torrey drives the baseline. Feeds it underneath. The shot goes up and in. That was by Schaefer. And the Vikings quickly back down the floor. Addison with a three-pointer off the iron. No good. Rebound taken down by the Mounders, and the Mounders looking to tie it up or take the lead. 5.44 to go in the first half. Torrey with it. Feeds it over to Schreiber. Schreiber back to Torrey. Torrey looking for somewhere to go. Finally tries to feed it into the lane to Schaefer, and we have a timeout called by the Mounders. Timeout on the floor, 5.25 to go in the first half. It's the Colfax Vikings 15, the Elk Mound Mounders 13, and you are listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. <coughs> are your animals feeling a little under the weather? Give the nice folks at Colfax Animal Hospital a call. Bruce Buckley is just what the doctor ordered. In fact, he is the doctor, and he's ready to help. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Give them a call at 715-962-3380. And we're back here at Colfax High School, where the Mounders just took a timeout. 5.25 to go in the first half. Vikings up by two, 15-13. Mounders inbound at midcourt. Cedarblade inbound. Gets it into Tori Blaskowski. 
Comes across the timeline. Feeds it over to Schreiber. Schreiber out to Schaefer. They get it wide to Haley Blaskowski. Or check that, that's Tory. And they were trying to get it to Haley on the left side this time. Ball gets knocked out of bounds by the Vikings. Schleisner knocked it out. So Cedar Blade to inbound for the Mounders. And the inbound pass gets knocked out of bounds this time by Jenna Bovey. So once again, the Mounders will try to inbound it. Pass comes in to Blaskowski. That's Haley. Haley cross-court pass over to Schreiber. Back over to Haley. And the ball gets intercepted by Schleisner. Gets it out to Charlo at the top of the key. To Schleisner coming down the right side. And we have... Blocking foul. Uh, yeah, blocking foul. And I believe it's going to be against Cedar Blade. No, I take it back. It was against Tori Blaskowski. It's her first personal third team foul. Shot goes up by the Vikings and it's no good. That was Stanky with a shot going up. And it's Haley with it. Comes across the timeline down the right side. Leads it over to Tori at the free throw line. Brings it down around the left side. Back out high to Tori. On the left side to Schreiber. Schreiber with it. Gives it to Haley this time between the circles. Back over to Schreiber on the left. Out high to Schaefer. Now to Haley to Tory. Back out to Schreiber. Schaefer with a shot and it's up and no good. Rebound taken down by the Mounders. Feeds it down low to Blaskowski and she brings it out again. That's Haley with it. Feeds it over to Schreiber. And we have a whistle on fire. Schaefer had it out between the circles and... We have a pushing foul against Elk Mound. And that foul is going to be on Tori Blaskowski, her second personal, fourth team foul. Vikings have inbounded the ball. Schleisner with it, right through that C in the middle of the floor. Leads it over to the right side to Meredith. Back out to Schleisner at the top of the key. Over to Irwin. To Barstead, then down low to Meredith, and it's up in a whistle, foul called underneath. And I believe this one's going to be on Haley Blaskowski. It is, it's her first personal, 15 foul. And Meredith goes to the line. First shot is up and in. Camry Meredith. Five points for her. And I believe they've all come from the free throw line. Second shot is in. And the Vikings go up 17-13 with 324 remaining in the first half. The Mounders inbound it, goes off a leg and out of bounds, and that was a Mounder leg it went off of, so the Vikings have the ball. They'll inbound it in the forecourt. Get it out to Schleisner. She comes across the timeline with it. Takes it around to the right side, still high, wide, and right. To Charlotte between the circles. To Irwin on the right side. To Schleisner. Feeds it down to Barstead. Drives into the lane. Turnaround shot. No good. Rebound by. Sh and we have a whistle and a foul. Charlo tried to put the follow up in and she got fouled in the attempt. So she's going to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Taya Schaefer. It's her first personal. Sixth team foul. Both teams will be in the bonus from this point on. First shot is good. Charlo, 18-13. And the second shot is money as well. 19-13, Vikings on top. Haley with it. Cross-court pass to Cedar Blade. Back to Haley. Down to Emery. 
Emery with a long shot up and in. Nice three-point shot by Brooke Emery. 19-16, Vikings on top, 240 left in the first half. Schleisner feeds it over to the left side to Irwin. It's back over to Schleisner on the right. Now it's down to Charlotte underneath to Meredith. Out high. Meredith drives the lane, puts a shot up. No. Chases down her own rebound. Circles back out. Cross court pass to Barstead. Just outside the arc to Charlotte. Tries to feed it down to Irwin underneath and can't quite control the pass. Irwin couldn't quite get both hands on it and it goes out of bounds. Vikings with full court pressure on. The Mounders are trying to inbound it. They get it into Blaskowski. Back over to Cedarblade. Now back to Haley. Haley over to Cedarblade. To Torrey. Torrey drives the lane. No. And the rebound taken down by Meredith. Meredith quickly down across the timeline. Feeds it over to the left side. Shot goes up. No good. That was Irwin. But Schleisner with a follow-up, no. Meredith with a follow-up, no. And now we have a whistle and a foul being called. I believe the foul is going to be on Maddie Barstead. Yeah, a little frustration foul there. They missed, uh, what, three, four shots in a row and uh, tried to get a little steal and got a little over-aggressive. That's Barstead's first personal, seventh team foul, so that puts Cedar Blade at the line for the one and one. First shot's on its way and good. Sophie Cedar Blade, 5'8 senior, shooting guard. And her second shot on the way, and it's good. 19 to 18, Vikings on top. Those are the first two points for Cedar Blade, and she's the leading scorer for the Mounders. Irwin has it on the right side, gets it out high to Addy, feeds it over to the left side to Schleisner. Schleisner looking to get it back out to Addy at the free throw line. Back over to Schleisner on the left. Schleisner to Shetterlow, who tries to drive the lane, feeds it back out to Irwin. Irwin takes it down to the free throw line. Back over to Charlo on the right. Feeds it into the lane to Meredith, who puts it up. No good. Rebound taken down by Torrey. And Torrey brings it quickly back down the floor. Just over a minute to go in the first half. Schreiber with it. Feeds it out between the circles to Haley. Or check that that was Torrey. Now Haley has it between the circles to Schreiber, out to Haley, back over to Schreiber and she loses the handle on the ball and it goes out of bounds, Vikings have it with 41 and some change to go in the first half, Vikings up by one, 19 to 18, Meredith inbound to Schleisner, Schleisner across the timeline, to Addy, tries to feed it down to Charlo, it goes off a mounder leg, but Addy gets hold of the ball and feeds it back out to Irwin. Over to Addy on the left side. Addy tries to drive to the baseline. Finds the going tough. Gets it out to Schleisner. Feeds it around to the right side, and now it goes down underneath the Charlo. Back out to Addy. Schleisner with it. 12 seconds to go in the half. Schleisner dribbles, takes it around to the right side, gives it to Irwin. Irwin with a three. No. Follow up shot is in. Meredith with the follow-up jumper. And that's the end of the first half with the score. The Colfax Vikings 21, the Elk Mound Mounders 18. Dan, we've got a heck of a ball game here what a, tonight. What a game. <laughs> well, we're going to be back with some halftime programming right after this brief timeout. And you're listening to Colfax Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. 
As you check names off your holiday gift giving list, Dairy State Bank encourages you to go local. When you support locally owned and operated businesses, every dollar you spend returns threefold to your local economy, putting your hard earned money to work in the community you call home. So this holiday season, consider gifting locally crafted goods or an experience at a local eatery, craft beverage maker, or a performance with family and friends. Dairy State Bank, banking on relationships. Member FDIC. Let's be honest, the National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Officers, with the members of the Colfax Rescue Squad, firefighters from Colfax Elk Mound, Wheaton Howard, and law enforcement officers from Colfax, Elk Mound, and Dunn County, uh, please step forward. For Viking Profile, where we take a closer look at one of the Colfax Viking players. And now, Viking Profile. Today on Viking Profile, we're going to get to know Jaina Bovey, a senior at Colfax High School. We'll be chatting with Jaina right after this message. We are the boy band. Your tween made you see. We are the boy band. It's painful concert number three. We are the boy band. We're five and nineteen. We are the boy band. Always singing on key. You love your kids enough to take them to see their favorite uh, band. Love them enough to make sure they're buckled up in the back seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We're talking right now with Jaina Bovia on Viking Profile. And Jaina, we know you play basketball, but are you involved in any other activities here at school? Uh, yes, I participate in track and a bunch of other clubs. What do you do in track? I run the 4x1, the 4x2, the 4x4, and I jump and long jump. And how's that been going for you? I'm um, good. Track's my favorite sport, and I'm really excited for the spring. And now, when did you start playing basketball, and, and what kind of experiences have you, have you had doing that? I started in third grade with the rest of my friends and all of our dads were coaches and we all had a lot of fun. So what's the most important thing you've learned from playing basketball? Um, it's really a team sport and to succeed you have to play together and everybody has to have their own part. So when not playing basketball or you're not here at school, what are some other things that uh, you're interested in that keep you occupied? Um, I hang out with my family and my friends a lot and I watch a lot of Netflix. <laughs> all right, we have some rapid fire questions for you. First of all, Pie, ice cream, cake, or cookies? Pie. Any particular kind? Chocolate silk. Ooh, sounds <laughs> good. Ford, Chevy, or some other brand? Um, some other brand. <laughs> what, like which one? Honda. Okay, any particular reason? Um, I drive a Honda and I really like it. Your favorite NBA or WNBA team? Uh, Miami Heat. Okay, and your favorite collegiate basketball team? Wisconsin Badgers. Now we're talking with Jaina Bovey, and Jaina, what are your plans after high school? Um, I plan to go to Winona State and get a business degree and eventually be a realtor. How about a shout out to your family? 
Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, sisters. <laughs> so when people come to Viking games, what number do you wear and what position do you play? I'm number 12, and I am a guard. All right, we want to thank Jana Bovey for joining us today on Viking Profile. Coming up next is more Viking Halftime. You've been listening to Viking Profile. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. the Colfax High School Report with an update on what's happening at Colfax High School. Last week at Colfax High School, due to the short week, sports schedules were a little light. The only team in action were the Viking Girls. On Tuesday, November 26th, the C Team defeated the Bloomer Blackhawks 46-6, while at the same time, the Viking Junior Varsity needed to mount a late comeback to defeat the Bloomer JV 35-29. Following that, the Viking girls varsity scored the hat trick for Colfax as they dominated Bloomer 64-47. The remainder of the week was the annual Thanksgiving holiday break and we at the Northern Light Webcasting Network hope you all had a very happy Thanksgiving and for those of you who are hunting deer, we hope you found success. Now coming up next week, be sure to mark your calendar for the high school holiday concert on Monday, December 9th. That concert begins at 7 p.m. Also, the elementary middle school concerts will be on Tuesday, December 10th. The junior kindergarten will perform at 9 a.m. and at 12.30 p.m. Kindergartners will be at 10.30 a.m., grades 1 through 4 at 1.30 p.m., and grades 5 through 8 will be at 7 p.m. The Viking girls have two games next week. On Tuesday, December 10th, the girls travel to Elmwood to take on Elmwood Plum City. And then on Friday, the girls host the Glenwood City Hilltoppers. In both games, JV gets underway at 5.45 with the varsity starting at 7.15. And of course, we'll have all the varsity action of both games right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Also, the Viking boys will host the Elk Mound Mounders on Thursday, December 12th. JV is at 5.45 and the varsity is at 7.15. And that's what's happening here at Colfax High School. This has been Rick Olson reporting. You've been listening to the Colfax High School Report with an update on what's happening at Colfax High School. The second half of Colfax Viking Basketball is coming up. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. <laughs> And we're back here at Colfax High School. Rick Olson along with Dan Petchout. Dan, we've got a heck of a ball game going on here at halftime. Colfax has a lead of 21 to 18. Uh, what are the numbers telling us? Yeah, it's real close tonight. Um, our leading scorer for Colfax tonight is Cameron Meredith with eight points. And Six of those are from the free throw line. Yeah, yeah, she's done really good at the free throw line. And Morgan Schleisner, or I mean Taylor Irwin's got five. Uh, Rachel Charlo's got four. Jana Bovey's got two, and Morgan Schleisner's in that two. And the leading scorer right now for Elk Mound is Taya Schaefer with seven. And then we got a bunch of girls with three. A bunch of three-pointers by Elk Mound. They've been working around the perimeter a little more than 
Colfax. Colfax has been able to get inside and get some fouls and uh, get some free throws. And what it all boils down to is a really close basketball game. Hey fans, we want to remind you that Colfax Viking basketball is being brought to you by Dairy State Bank, where they're banking on relationships. Colfax Animal Hospital, trust your pets to Dr. Buckley and his staff. Morgan's Auto Body, where after an oh no moment, they can make your car right again. Colfax Messenger for over 100 years, keeping you informed about what's happening in the Colfax area. Colfax Hometown Pharmacy, their family caring for your family. And Kyle's Market, where customer service is supersized. Be sure to thank these sponsors of Colfax Viking Basketball right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Uh, one more thing for you. Remember that uh, due to the teacher in service tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, school is going to be dismissed at 12.30 p.m. There will be no morning kindergarten, or no morning or afternoon junior kindergarten. Let's get that straight. I, it's no morning or afternoon junior kindergarten. Juniors. But boy, didn't they just have a couple days <laughs> off due to Thanksgiving? <laughs> <laughs> well, they need the rest. I guess so. And while the teachers need a chance to get things figured out, too. So I'll tell you what, we're going to be back in just a minute or so. We're going to take a brief time out. It's halftime, Colfax style, on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. The Colfax Messenger has covered the happenings of Colfax and the surrounding area for over 120 years. No one cares for Colfax like the Messenger. Readers get the most current news, sports, and feature stories about the people and places of Colfax. Also, the Messenger is your one-stop source for all your printing needs. To subscribe to the Colfax Messenger or receive a free quote on your printing needs, call the Messenger at 715-265-4646 or visit them online at www. .dwitmedia.com Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Philadelphia. Local time is 3.05 p.m. and the temperature is 67 degrees. At this time, you are now free to use your cellular devices. You know that feeling when you get to turn your phone on after the plane lands? You can have that feeling every time you drive. Make sure your cell phone is stowed away whenever you are behind the wheel. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. The Northern Light Webcasting Network is excited to be carrying Colfax Viking basketball. Join us by tuning in Saturday afternoon as the Viking boys take on Chippewa Falls McDonald from UW Stout. Viking pregame starts at 3.45 p.m. and live play-by-play -play begins at 4 o'clock. That's the Viking Boys Saturday afternoon right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. And I don't know who that crazy guy was on that ad telling us about that the live play-by-play -play actually begins at 3.55. We don't want to go start right at the opening tip-off. And that's assuming that they're running on time. That's part of the Northwest Classic or Northwest Tip-Off Classic. And it's a full day of basketball over at Johnson Fieldhouse on the UW Stout campus. And uh, folks, I'll tell you what, that's a, a fun time. Get on over there, watch a whole lot of high school basketball and nothing else. Get over and watch the, the Vikings take on the Chippewa Falls McDonald Max. Could be an awfully good game. The Max made it to state last year. And the Vikings got knocked, well, they're the defending Dun St. Croix champions and got knocked out in the sectionals. Uh, so, yeah, we have two high powered, high caliber teams uh, going into that game. Yeah, the other night uh, up at Amory, uh, Colfax looked really good, so I think it should be a good matchup. Yeah, aside from some early jitters that they had and some tentative passes and so on. But we're ready to get this one restarted. A three-point game, and the Mounders have the ball to inbound it. And she looks for somewhere to go, gets it into Haley. Glaskowski feeds it. Down on the right side, but the ball gets knocked away and picked up by Jana Bovey of the Vikings and feeds it over to Meredith. Meredith brings it down the floor, across the timeline. On the right side, back out between the circles to Schleisner. Schleisner over to Steinke. Steinke into Meredith and puts it up and in. Meredith off the glass. Good ball movement by Colfax. And the Vikings 
or the Mounders bringing it back down the floor. Tori Blaskowski back with it out to Haley. Haley on the right side of the lane, back out high to Tori. Tori drives down into the lane, kicks it back out, three pointer on the way and good by Cedar Blade. 23 to 21, Vikings on top. Schleisner brings it down the floor for the Vikings. She feeds it over to the left side to Steinke. Out to Bovey between the circles to Schleisner on the right. To Meredith, drives the baseline, puts it up. Does not draw iron and does not draw foul. So the ball goes over to the Mounders who quickly come down the floor. Laskowski, this is the Tory style. Out to between the circles to Schreiber. Back over to Haley, or to Tory. Tory dribbles it now between the circles. Leads it over to the right side to Cedar Blade. Over to Schreiber. Back out to Haley. Now to Tory. Tory drives the baseline. Now kicks it out. Long shot by the Mounders, and that was Cedar Blade putting the shot up, and it's no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings to Charlo. She turns around, puts it up, no good. Rebound chased down by Meredith, knocks it out to Bobie. Now to Charlo from three, and she puts it in. Rachel Charlo cans a three pointer. And the Vikings go up by five, 26 to 21. Second chance is right there for Colfax to get the open three-pointer. Tori Blaskowski down the right side and up with the three is Cedar Blade. And Cedar Blade is deadly from that three-point range. She makes it look kind of easy. Yeah, quick answer there for Col or for Elk Mound. Bovey with it between the circles. Over to Steinke. Down low to Meredith, back out to Steinke, to Schleisner, back to Steinke on the left, or on the right, check that, and the pass to Bovey gets off the tip of her fingers and out of bounds. So the Mounders have it. Cedar Blade with it, and she's trying to go somewhere with it. We have a timeout call by the Mounders. 15.04 to go in the game. Vikings on top by two, 26 to 24. And you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. What makes Hometown Pharmacy different than the big chains? People. When you walk into Hometown Pharmacy, you'll see friends and neighbors on both sides of the counter. We come to Hometown Pharmacy because they are also very knowledgeable and helpful. We may not be on every corner, but chances are we're in your hometown or we'll be there shortly. And we care about you. Hometown Pharmacy, our family caring for your family. Stop by Colfax Hometown Pharmacy in downtown Colfax. And we are at Colfax High School where the Vikings have a two point lead, 26 to 24, 15.04 to go in the game. And the Mounders have the ball right at midcourt. Looking for somewhere to go, throws it into traffic, but Tori controls it for the Mounders. She takes it between the circles over to the left side. Now feeds it down to Schreiber. Schreiber tries to pass it underneath and not finding the handle is Taya Schaefer and it goes out of bounds and the Vikings have the ball. Turnovers are gonna be key for the rest of this game. You can see that. It's, it's how many times can you keep that team from scoring on their possession because that's the way it's kind of looking. Meredith has it between the circles for the Vikings. She drives to the free throw line, kicks it out to Steinke, puts a shot up, no good. Rebound taken down by Bovey, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound being fought for underneath and comes away with it are the Mounders and Haley has it. Drives down the right side of the lane, kicks it out to Tory. Tory, we have a jump ball being called. Vikings tied her up as she tried to drive the lane. Tori Blaskowski likes to, what she likes to do is drive into the lane and then kick it out for the outside shot as the Vikings collapse on her. This time they tied up the ball and possession arrow is in favor of the Vikings. Schleisner bringing it across the timeline. She has it on the left side, pass underneath to Charlo and a whistle and a foul as Charlo went up with it.
And the foul is being called on Schreiber. That's, That's her a, third. Yeah, third personal, first team foul. Shiloh's first shot rims around and off. Rachel Charlo's second shot. Nothing but net that time. 27-24, Vikings on top. Torrey with it in the backcourt. Being covered closely by Barstead. Now she drives down into the forecourt. Feeds it off to Schreiber. Back to Torrey. Drives into the lane. Kicks it out to Schreiber. Over to Torrey. And she puts up a three and hits it. And we are tied at 27. 13.45 remaining in the game. And we're tied. Bovey with it. Over to Charlo. Up between the circles. Back over to Bovey on the right side. Tries to feed it down low to Meredith. And we have a whistle and a foul. Looks and like Schreiber three. again. That's her fourth personal. So she's going to go take a seat. Brooke Emery into the lineup for the Mounders. Inbound pass. To Charlo, whose shot was no good. Rebound chased down by Schleissner. Back out to Charlo. She's between the circles. To Meredith. Meredith gets to the free throw line. Out to Bovey. Bovey back. Oh, that's Irwin. I'm sorry. But Irwin, but uh, feeds it down to Schleissner. Tries to drive the baseline and can't quite get the shot up. And the Mounders have it as they come across the timeline. Laskowski feeds it over to Emery. Emery out high to Schaefer. Schaefer to Haley. Haley feeds it to Torrey. Torrey feeds it underneath to Schaefer and Schaefer tries to go up and gets fouled on the way. And that foul is on Camry Meredith. That's her first personal, first team foul. Yeah, Kof or Elkman likes to penetrate and pass out. And they got her there. Inbound pass to Emery. Feeds it over to Torrey. Out high to Haley. Over to Emery on the right side now. And she dribbles into the lane. Kicks it out high for a three-pointer by Schaefer. And the Mounders take a three-point lead with 12 and a half minutes to go in this one. Addie with it. Falling as she feeds it out to Meredith. But Meredith grabs the ball. Gets it over to Barstead. Addie has it now between the circles. Stops at the top of the key. Over to Irwin on the left. High, wide, and left. To Charlo between the circles. Over to Barstead. To Addie on the right. Addie tries to drive down to Meredith. Meredith is in a lot of traffic. Backs out of there. Now tries to penetrate. Can't get through. Falls loose on the floor. We have a jump ball being called. Possession arrow goes over to Elk Mound. Tight defense by Elk Mound right now. And we have a timeout being called by the Vikings. 12.02 remaining in the game. Elk Mound 30. Vikings 27, and you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Are your pooch's proportions putting on pounds? Or is your kitty's constitution constantly complaining? Well, stop by and see the friendly folks at the Colfax Animal Hospital. Dr. Bruce Buckley and his staff will be happy to help you get your family friend back on the road to healthy living. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. I don't know. Call them at 715-962-3380. And we're back here at Colfax High School, where the Vikings down by three, and Elk Mound has the ball. They inbound it, and gets tied up, and we have another jump ball, and this time it goes to the Vikings under their own basket. Irwin to inbound. Irwin still looking for somewhere to go with it. Feeds it underneath to Charlo, puts a shot up, no good. Rebound back up and in. Rachel Charlo with the putback, brings the Vikings to within one. 30 to 29, 11.50 to go in the game. Laskowski quickly down the floor, feeds it off to Emery. 
Emery out high to Schaefer. Schaefer to Torrey. He feeds it back into the lane and back out to Torrey quickly. Her shot is an air ball, but it gets fed out to Cedar Blade, and Cedar Blade's shot is in from three. 33 to 29. Biggest lead of the night for Elk Mound. Irwin with it between the circles for the Vikings. Gets it over to Addy. Feeds it to Meredith on the right side. To Charlotte. Long pass to Addy. It's going out of bounds. She throws it in, but the Mounders catch it and bring it back down the floor. Torrey with it. Drives at the free throw line. Kicks it back out to Emery. Back over to Torrey on the right side. Takes it up to the top of the key. To Haley over on the left. Haley drives down to the baseline. Tries to put it up. We have a whistle. And I think we got a foul on Addy. Number 30, Addy yes. Olson. Foul on Addy Olson. That's her second personal. Second team foul. Addison into the lineup along with Sybil Wilson. And the Mounders inbound it. Torrey with it out between the circles. Gets it over to the left side to Emery. Feeds it down low to Haley. Out high to Cedar Blade. Now they've got it on the right side and an errant pass heading for the sideline and out of bounds it goes. And the Vikings will have it right about midcourt. Turnovers. Yeah, that's what you were saying. So Addie has it. She drives the lane, dribbles it off her foot, and the ball goes out of bounds. And it was off of Elk Mound, and the Vikings have it under their own basket. Meredith inbound the pass. Comes to Addy, over to Addison, feeds it to Meredith in the lane. Meredith tries to pass it under, down low to Wilson, and the ball gets away and out of bounds. As you said, turnovers. Yeah. Now the Mounders have it. Vikings putting on full court pressure. Haley with it as she comes across the timeline for the Mounders. Over to Torrey. That's to Cedar Blade. To Haley, to Emery. Now Torrey with it, down on the right side near the baseline. Passes it back out and we have a whistle and a foul. Hollister had it and we, time we have a timeout. Timeout being called by the Mounders. 9.40 to go and you're listening, well the score, the Vikings 29, but the Mounders have 33. So you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. You took the first step and quit smoking, but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Hey fans, don't forget that the Vikings girls will travel to Elmwood to take on Elmwood Plum City on Tuesday, December 7th. JV begins at 545 and Varsity's at 715. And of course we're going to have all that Varsity action right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. That's coming up next Tuesday. And I'll tell you what, it's supposed to be so cold Tuesday night, you're not going to want to leave the house. So get some good, hot basketball action. Turn, turn, on your, turn on your computer or your cell phone or your tablet and listen to us, and we'll be sure we're there to bring it to you. All right, the Mounders have it inbounds, and this is Tori with it. Over to Haley on the left side. Driving down is Schaefer and puts it up. No good. That was uh, 
a shot by Hollister, and the Vikings bring it quickly back down the floor. Addison with it, down to Irwin. Irwin puts up a three, it's off the iron, no good. Chased down by Meredith. Meredith has the ball, and it goes off the leg of Cedarblade, and the Vikings have the ball on the baseline. Addison to inbound it to Irwin. Irwin has it at the free throw line. Out high to Addy. Over to Addison on the left. Just outside the arc. To Irwin. Irwin down to the free throw line. Takes it into the lane. We have a whistle and a foul. And I believe by the look on her face, this is against Haley Blaskowski. Oh, I take it back. It's not, though. <laughs> Cedar Blade? It, it's uh, Emery, Brooke Emery, oh, okay. with the foul. It's her first personal, fourth team foul. Addison with a three-pointer, no good. And rebound taken down by Elk Mound. He does a real, they do a real good job of protecting the ball on the rebounds. Torrey with it, over to Emery, on the left side. Takes it out between the circles to Haley. Now it's to Schaefer, over to uh, Haley. Haley tries to feed it into the lane. We have a whistle and a foul being called. Looks like Addie Olson. Yes, this one's against Addie. It is her third personal, third team foul. Addie checks out. And the Mounders inbound it to Haley. She gets it over to Cedar Blade, and we have a whistle and a foul. Cedar Blade walked with it. And she tried to do a jump stop, but her feet did not come down together. And the Vikings bring it down the floor as they're trailing by four. 8.19 to go in the game. Addison with it, high, wide, and right. Out to Irwin between the circles. Over to Charlotte, to Addison, down in the right corner. Feeds it into the lane to Meredith. Back out to Irwin. To Schleissner at the free throw line. To Addison from three. She got it! Addison Olsen with the three-pointer. Good ball movement here by Colfax. Get Addison Olsen open. 33 to 32. Mounders are up by one. And they bring it down the floor. This is Haley with it. Feeds it out high to Emery. Emery to Torrey. Out to Schaefer, or Cedar Blade, check that. And we have a whistle and a foul underneath. And looks like the foul is being called on Schleissner. It's her second personal, fourth team foul. Inbound pass, way out high to Blaskowski. That's to Haley. Now Torrey has it on the left side. Covered there by Addison. She tries to go up and loses the handle. The ball goes out of bounds, but evidently it went off of Addison because the Mounders keep control of the ball. Cedar Blade to inbound. Gets it into Schaefer, but the pass is intercepted by Meredith. Meredith taking it coast to coast. Feeds it off to Addison, puts the shot up. No good, it's off the iron. Chased down by Irwin. Get out. Uh, Schleissner puts up a three, but it's no good. And the rebound taken down by the Mounders. And it's Haley with it. A little pressure added on here by Colfax right now. Schleissner guarding pretty closely. And we have a 10 second violation against the Mounders. It took them more than 10 seconds to get it over the timeline. And the Vikings force the turnover. 6.58 to go. Mounders 33, Vikings 32. Schleissner with it across the timeline. Feeds it out to Meredith, to Irwin, to Schleissner on the left. Out to Addison at the top of the key, puts it up, no good. Rebound, put back up and in. And the Vikings are on top, 34 to 33. Charlo with the putback. Laskowski down the floor being covered closely by Addison. Now she takes it down to the right side of the lane, kicks it out to Emery. Emery at the top of the key to Blaskowski. That's Torrey. Back out to Schaefer, or Cedar Blade, to Emery. Emery drives the lane, puts it up, and it goes in. 
And the Mounders go back on top, 35 to 34. Schleisner quickly back down the floor for the Vikings. To Charlo. Charlo feeds it out to Addison. Addison, a quick three, goes up, no good. Rebound, taken out by Meredith. Put by Harm, he drops the Harm. Cameron Meredith with a little bunny shot on, on the miss that Addison had. Meredith, and she gets, up and she gets, up and she gets. One more from the charity stripe. That foul, by the way, was on Tori Blaskowski. It's her third personal, 15 foul on the Mounders. Merritt's shot is up and off the iron, no good. And we have a foul being called, I believe it's on Charlo, for a push off. Yeah, that's who they got. That's her third. And the 15 foul. The Mounders inbound it. Haley has it. And she comes down the floor, but she's being guarded pretty closely there by Schleissner. Pass goes over to Schreiber. And now it's over to the far side of the floor, back to Haley. Haley kicks it out to Emery. Emery's shot is up and in. That's a three-pointer by Emery. Big puts, shot by Brooke Emery. Puts the Mounders back on top, 38 to 36, 522 to go. Irwin with it for the Vikings. Gets it out to Charlo. Charlo drives into the line, puts it up, in! We are tied at 38. Haley brings it down the floor. She's across the timeline. Gets to the free throw line. Kicks it out to Schreiber, or to Cedarblade. Ball gets knocked loose. They're fighting for it on the floor. And we have a jump ball. Jump ball being called. And the possession arrow is in favor of the Mounders. That was Addison and Cedarblade fighting for the ball. Addison worked her way in there and tied it up and forced the jump ball. Mounders keep possession because of the possession arrow, but the Vikings will have it next time. Ball comes into Torrey. Torrey with it on the right side. Gets it over to Emery. Emery back over to Torrey on the right. She feeds it around to Schaefer. Schaefer back out to Torrey. Torrey drives on the right side of the lane to the baseline. Tries to put it up. It's off the bottom of the iron. And it's picked up there by Charlo. Feeds it out to Schleisner. Schleisner quickly down. Gives it to Charlo from three. Off the iron. No good. Rebound taken down by Meredith who takes it out. Circles around. Gets it to Charlo. Charlo puts a shot up. No good. Rebound. And it's off of Addison. Out of bounds. And it's going to go to the Mounders. Second chance ever is for Colfax tonight. Some haven't gone, but uh, they've been right there to get the rebound. Inbound to Haley. Haley bringing it down the floor. Guarded closely by Schleissner. She goes over to the right side. Gives it to Emery at the top of the key. Whistle and a foul as Schaefer has the ball. Got her on double dribble. And like you said, turnovers are key. Yeah, and we have a timeout being called by the Vikings. 3.50 to go in the game. We are all tied at 38. And you are listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in... Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. And we're back here at Colfax High School where, Dan, we're all knotted up at 38. We've got a heck of a ball game with 3.50 to go. Two great teams going at it right now. Schleissner with the ball for the Vikings as she comes down the floor. Through the center circle. Gets it off to Addison on the left. 
Out high to Charlotte. Over to Irwin on the right. Cross court pass to Schleister. Drives the baseline. Tries to go up. Jazz the foul. Walking foul. Morgan Schleister, the little one in the land of the Giants, not afraid to go up and mix it up because she knows she's likely to end up on the line. Yes, yeah, she found a little seam there on the baseline and uh, drew the foul. Her first shot is on the way and nothing but net. 39-38, Vikings on top. 3.34 to go. Schleiser to get her second one now. Shots on the way, and in. 40 to 38, Vikings on top. Tory with it, coming down the floor, being guarded there by Addison. She takes it to the left side, now back over to the right. Feeds it over to Schreiber. Back out to Tory. High wide and left, or high wide and right, now between the circles. Now over to the left side. Gets it over to Schreiber. Out to Haley. Haley out near the center circle. Now she's on the right side. Feeds it down low for Tory, but she can't find the handle of it. Goes out of bounds, and the Vikings have it. Good defense by Koufax. Good job by Schleisner and Addison Olsen to create turnover. And the Vikings come down the floor. Schleisner with it. Feeding it over to Irwin. Irwin drives into the lane. Kicks it out to Charlotte. Charlotte drives it and puts it up and in. Rachel Charlotte using her size and coming through big in this latter part of the game. Vikings up 42 to 38 with 2.37 to go. The Mounders have it. Uh, Cedar Blade with it. Gets it out to Tory. Back to Cedar Blade, or that Schaefer. To Haley, back to Schaefer, puts it up. No good. Rebound. Chased down, and we got a foul being called on Addison. She was chasing it down, but uh, uh, Schreiber was kind of more in the path of the ball, and Addison ended up wrapping her arms around her. And that's Addison's first foul, sixth team foul against the Vikings. So from this point on, both teams will be in the bonus. Inbound pass to Schaefer. They feed it out high, and it's over to Tory on the right side. Back out high to Schaefer, to Emery. Emery drives the baseline. She's cut off there. Gets it out to Schaefer. Puts it up. No good. Rebound taken down by Meredith. Quickly down the floor. Meredith taking it down. Gets it to Charlotte. Puts it up, and a whistle on a foul. Charlotte's shot did not go in, but Charlotte is going to the line. Ball being called on Schaefer. That's her third personal, seventh team. Charlo's first shot is up and off the front of the iron, no good. Second shot on its way and it's good. 43 to 38, Vikings on top by five. Torrey taking it down the floor, covered by Addison. She takes it between the circles. Now down the right side. Pass was intended for Sister Haley, but Haley went one way, the ball went the other, and the Vikings have the ball. More good defense by Colfax. Uh, create another turnover. Minute 37 to go. Schleisner with it. Taking her time in the backcourt. Now crosses the timeline, gets it over to Addison. On the left side, back over to the right side, high, wide, and right to Charlo. To nice. Schleisner. And now it looks like we're going to have Schleisner going to the line as the foul is being called on Schaefer. That's her fourth personal, eighth team foul. But it looks like they want to put the Vikings on the line with a five point difference with a. Oh, first shot by. Uh, uh, Schleisner is good, 44 to 38. Just over a minute 20 to go. So I suspect we're gonna see a lot of trips to the line now. Second shot off the front of the iron. Rebound by the Vikings, put back up, no good. Addison with the shot, it's in! Addison with the put back. 
46 to 38. And the Mounders put up a shot down at the other end. No good. Rebound taken down by Irwin. Irwin in a trap. And timeout being called by the Vikings. Coach set wanted a timeout rather than have Irwin caught in a trap. 46 to 38. You're listening to Viking Basketball in the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Here's that song again. Here's that song again. For the hundredth time today. Here's that song again. It's gonna be stuck in your head all day. Yay! Here's that song again. It will make you cray cray. You love your kids enough to watch that TV show a bajillion times. Yay! Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat for their age and size. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. And we're back here at Colfax High School where the Colfax Varsity is trying to complete the trifecta for the night. The Junior Varsity defeated Elk Mound 52 to 31 and the C Team defeated Elk Mound 42 to 22. And the Varsity has a 46 to 38 lead, an eight point lead over the Mounders. And they have the ball in the backcourt as they're gonna inbound it there. Irwin inbounds it to Schleisner. And she's fouled immediately by Blaskowski. So she'll go to the line for one and one. That's Blaskowski, that's Haley Blaskowski's third personal, ninth uh, team foul. So after this, the Vikings will be in the double bonus. Yeah, it's gonna be finished at the free throw line. Schleisner's first shot is up off the front of the iron rebound taken down by meredith and we have a whistle evidently meredith climbed over the back to get that rebound and so we're going to walk to the other end of the floor to shoot some more this time it's tori blaskowski on the line that's meredith's second personal seventh team foul Torrey with the one and one. First shot's on the way and no good. Rebound taken down by Charlo. And we have a whistle and a foul called right away. And that foul is gonna be on Emery. Or check that, that's a four one, not a one one. <laughs> oh, it is foul. Yeah, it's Sophie Cedarblade and that's her first personal. 10th team foul. So Charlo shooting two, first one's on its way, in, out, and in, and out. Rattled around and didn't want to go down. So here's the second one. Off the back of the iron, no good. Laskowski, Torrey with the rebound. Throws it down the floor to Emery, out to Haley. Three-pointers on its way, no good. Rebound taken down by Meredith and a whistle and a foul. I think this is going to be on Emery. Yep. Yes, this one is on Emery. That's her second personal. Cameron Meredith at the line for two. 44.7 to go in this game. First shot's on its way and in. Second point on its, or second shot on its way, no good. Rebound tapped around and come, and Elk Mound comes down with it. Laskowski quickly down the floor. Between the circles, kicks it over to Schaefer, puts it up, no good. Rebound by Schleisner and she's fouled. Meredith has 13 points on the night. Charlo has 17. They've held Cedar Blade uh, to 11. Uh, Schaefer has 13 for the Mounders. Schleisner on the line. Her first shot is on its way off the front, off the back, and down the middle. 48-38, Vikings up by 10. Second shot on its way, no good. Rebound chased down by the Mounders. Just under 30 seconds to go in this game. Taking it to the hole as Schaefer puts it up. Addison with the rebound and she's fouled immediately. So Addison's gonna go to the line. And the foul is on Tori, I believe. Yes, that's her fourth personal.
Addison to shoot two. First one's on its way off the back of the air, no good. Addison has a very unorthodox free throw shooting style. She shoots that two-handed free throw. She's talking with her father about that. He says, well, too late to change it now. Second shot is in. He said, as long as they go in, he doesn't mind. <laughs> Ball comes across the timeline. And Blaskowski, shot goes up, no good. Rebound. Schleissner with it, dribbling around in the backcourt. We've got about eight seconds to go. That should do it. Meredith with it, four seconds. Gets it down to Addison. Addison just hangs on to it. And that's the buzzer. Final score in this one, the Colfax Vikings, 49. The Elk Mound Mounders, 38. Holy cow, Dan, we had a heck of a ball game. I'll let you catch your breath while you get all those numbers taken care of. And we're going to have uh, Coach Doucette up here to talk with us during Viking post game, And we'll have that coming up in just a minute. You are listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Oh, I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? You've been listening to Colfax Viking Basketball, live on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School. Stay tuned, coming up next is Viking Post Game with a look back at today's game. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. The dad joke. <laughs> Corny, grown worthy but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. I can't believe he found them. He seems sorry. We very clearly told him not to look up there. I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it. Right? What, did he balance on that big chair? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess he'll just know what his gifts are this year. I really thought we had hidden them well. If they can find their presence, they can find a gun. 911, what is your emergency? Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Family Fire. Time now for Viking Post Game, with a wrap-up of today's Colfax Viking Girls game. And now, Viking Post Game. And we're back here at Colfax High School where the Vikings came out on top. Final score, 49-38 to over the Elk Mound Mounders. And just on cue, in comes Coach Doucette. And uh, Coach, congratulations on a tough game. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh... I tell you what, Jordan had them ready. They, you know, took away everything we like to do. It took us a while, and, you know, I just, I was proud of our persistence. They really uh, made sure that Camry and Rachel weren't going to hurt us early, but they, they found a way to stay with it, and, and as a team, I thought we found a way to stay with and, it. And, and the thing that, that we noticed earlier this season, and it held true again tonight, the girls didn't really seem to get very flustered. They, they realized they had a problem on their hands, but yeah. they worked hard at it and, and tried to solve it. And, and uh, you had some good play from all the way up and down. We talked about it in the pregame show, yeah. and I asked you who was going to step up, and you said we like to play as a whole team, and that's what you had tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were close. I mean, uh, I sensed a little frustration, and, and uh, but yeah, we never went over the edge. And... Uh, I thought Addison Olson tonight gave us a big spark with you know with that three and just her hustle and and uh, that you know that was huge. But you know again we just were able to start making some plays and getting some stops and 
but you know, God, they shot the ball well, Rick. I, I don't know how many threes they made, and every time we helped, they made a shot, and, and uh, you know, we really thought we were in trouble, and, and I give our kids a lot of credit for hanging in and there. And they really like that penetrate the lane and then kick it back out for the three yeah they did and we we you know it just uh, we tried to help we're, we're built on helping each other and it hurt us tonight a few times and and you mentioned addison olsen yeah the three was a big thing but uh boy oh boy she seemed to have uh that tori blaskowski really frustrated because she was right in her hip pocket every time she was bringing that ball down the floor and and a number of times it came down and all of a sudden there was an errant pass yep yep she did a great job for us it was her night tonight you know next night it could be somebody else and and uh but well we're real proud of her we you know we, we knew she was talented and you know like we said we got so many kids and it's tough to find minutes and she really came through tonight and and i know that i know she's been looking forward to doing something like that and uh but boy oh boy i'm just really impressed with the way your girls spread things out and did what they needed to do to get the win tonight yep thanks rick i and appreciate it tuesday night we head over to elmwood yeah you bet that's going to be some more fun you, and you uh, bet yep, and yep. So, we're just so, you know we're happy to be one and oh we're happy to be one and oh in the dun st croix you know elk mound out played us for a long stretch and, and they were super well prepared they got a great coaching staff and you know we are fortunate tonight but again I, I we showed some great qualities and and uh you know i think that's the important part well congratulations on that win enjoy it tonight and we'll see you tuesday night thank you very much and so that's coach Doucette, and we'll have some more viking post game right after this timeout Open calendar. What's my schedule looking like? Next Thursday, you will be caught in an emergency flash flood between Park and First Street. What? No, no, that, that doesn't work. I'm, I'm busy then. Decline. De decline. Floods don't exactly work around your schedule. Disasters don't plan ahead. But you can. It starts with talking to your loved ones about making an emergency plan. So don't wait. Communicate. Visit readywisconsin.wi.gov. Brought to you by Ready Wisconsin, FEMA, and the Ad Council. And we're back here at Colfax High School where the Vikings have just defeated the Elk Mound Mounders by a score of 49 to 38. Dan, tell us about those numbers. Yeah, here's our leading scorers for Colfax tonight. Number 44, Rachel Charlo had 17 points. Cameron Meredith had 13. And we had two girls, Addison Olson and Morgan Schleissner with six points. Elk Mound's leading scorer tonight was Sophie Cedarblade, number 41. She had 11 points. Brooke Emery had eight, and then a bunch of girls. We had Taya Schaefer with seven, and then a bunch of girls with three points. So, like I was telling you earlier, you live by the three, you die by the three, and uh, they shot 10 three-pointers. That's how many they made, but uh, they didn't do any work inside and turnovers. That was kind of the key. It was the key, and that, that stingy Colfax defense kind of put the clamps on when they ha finally had to. And uh, as, as Coach and I were talking about, and this is just one example, and this isn't the only one that was doing this, but I, but when Tori Blaskowski, who's kind of their ball handler for Elk Mound, was bringing the ball down the floor late in the game and was being covered by Addison Olson, and Addison was right there in her hip pocket, and Tori just had a heck of a time trying to get the ball down the floor. And then, and then be, she'd be so frustrated by the time she got down into the forecourt that she'd throw the ball away. Yeah, yeah. Turnovers uh, in the second half were big, and uh, they should, in my opinion, Elkmont should have came out and helped her a little more get the ball across because you shouldn't be, you shouldn't get called the ten second. Right. That, 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 yeah, on that ten second violation, and again, that's that stingy Colfax defense and. Uh, Boy, they came to play. They were tested tonight. Elk Mound played a heck of a game. They shot really well, but the Vikings found a way to persevere. And uh, so we've got. Uh, let's see. You and I, we're gonna we're gonna be back together again Saturday afternoon. Saturday from afternoon over at Johnson Fieldhouse at UW Stout, as we have the boys taking on Chippewa Falls McDonald, and that's in the Northwest Tip Off Classic. That ought to be a lot of fun. And, uh, and then we'll have the girls again next Tuesday from over in Elmwood as they take on Elmwood Plum City. And that also ought to be a lot of fun. Hey, fans, I want to remind you that uh, Colfax Viking basketball is being brought to you by Dairy State Bank. 
where they're banking on relationships. The Colfax Animal Hospital, trust your pets to Dr. Buckley and his staff. Morgan's Auto Body, where an oh no moment, after that they can make your car right again. The Colfax Messenger, for over 100 years, keeping you informed about what's happening in the Colfax area. Colfax Hometown Pharmacy, their family caring for your family, and Kyle's Market, where customer service is supersized. Be sure to thank these sponsors of Colfax Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. And so, Dan, I will see you at Stout on Saturday. By the way, tip-off for that game is at 4 o'clock, folks, so you don't want to miss that. And the final score in this one, once again, Vikings 49, Elk Mound Mounders 38. You've been listening to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Visit readywisconsin.wi.gov and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by Ready Wisconsin, FEMA, and the Ad Council. You've been listening to Viking Post Game, a wrap-up of today's Colfax Viking Girls Game. You can catch Colfax Vikings games by tuning in to any of the Northern Light Webcasting Network outlets. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. The Northern Light Webcasting Network is excited to be carrying Colfax Viking basketball. Join us by tuning in Saturday afternoon as the Viking boys take on Chippewa Falls McDonald from UW Stout. Viking pregame starts at 3.45 p.m. and live play-by-play -play begins at 4 o'clock. That's the Viking boys Saturday afternoon right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network.